Hello and welcome to Nikolai's genetics lessons and today another uh, genetics probability problem and uh, here's the problem. Let's cross one genotype. I wouldn't uh, read it aloud with another genotype. Let's assume that the genes are independently assorting. First, what is the chance that a particular offspring has this particular genotype? If you choose to set up a Punnett square, be aware, you'll have 16 columns and 64 rows for grand total of 1024 boxes. Don't make any mistakes. I encourage you to pause video, uh, try to solve this problem on your own first and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. And actually uh, the way it's explained in the textbooks when we use a Punnett square and uh, this is diploid organism as you see each gene represented with two alleles and if we calculate number of uh, gametes of one organism and number of gametes of the second organism the number of outcomes is a huge so it probably would take you many hours to build such huge a Punnett square and then hours to find uh, frequency of uh, this particular uh, genotype and um, probability of this genotype. But uh, there is uh, another way to solve this problem. And uh, first of all, let's take a look at this genotypes of uh, parent 1 and parent 2. How many genes we have here? We have gene A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 genes here and 8 genes here. And each gene represented with two alleles. Both parents has two alleles for each gene because these two uh, organisms, this can be whatever organism you like, uh, it can be animal or plant, but this organism uh, is deployed. So each parent has two alleles for each gene. Sometimes, as you see, uh, gene can be in homozygous dominant state, sometimes in heterozygous state, and uh, actually, it is very easy to solve this problem. Just follow my logic. So in um, progeny, we are looking for the probability that uh, progeny would be heterozygous for gene A. And what is the probability? We know that parent 1 is heterozygous for this gene, parent 2 also heterozygous for this gene. So let's build a simple Punnett square. So parent 1 is heterozygous, parent 2 also heterozygous, and when we build the Punnett square, we can predict uh, probabilities of different genotypes in the progeny. Capital A, capital A, capital A, small a here, and capital A, small a here, and small a, small a here. So one parent, second parent, and we are looking for probability in the progeny to be heterozygous. And as you see, such a probability is 50% or one uh, half or two out of four, which is the same. So for gene A, uh, probability that uh, in progeny would be heterozygous state is one half. Let's now analyze the second gene, that is gene B. Parent 1 is homozygous dominant and parent 2 is heterozygous. So once again, let's build a Punnett square for this gene. So parent 1 is homozygous dominant, parent 2 is heterozygous. And once again, this simple Punnett square 
would tell us probability for the progeny to be heterozygous. So capital B small b and capital B small b here. So as you see, 50% of the progeny of such a cross of one parent who is homozygous dominant, another parent who is heterozygous. So we are looking for the probability for the progeny to be heterozygous and such probability would be 50% or one half. So one half for the gene B also in the progeny to be heterozygous. So let's now uh, move to the third gene. Gene C, parent 1 is heterozygous, parent uh, 2 homozygous recessive. So parent 1 uh, heterozygous, capital C, small c, and parent 2 homozygous recessive. And once again we build the Punnett square. Capital C, small c here, small c, small c here, capital C, small c here, and small c, small c here. And we are looking for homozygous recessive. And as you see, homozygous recessive would be 50% in such a cross. So once again, we put one half for this gene. So uh, maybe let me change the colors. So one half um, here and one half in white here. So let's uh, do the same for the gene D. Uh, parent one is heterozygous and parent 2 homozygous dominant. We actually don't need uh, another Punnett square. We have uh, one parent who is homozygous dominant, another parent who is heterozygous. And as you see, uh, we are looking for probability that uh, progeny going to be homozygous dominant and 50% uh, of the progeny uh, of such a cross would be homozygous dominant. So once again we have to put one half for the gene T probability in the progeny that state would be homozygous dominant. Let's now move to another gene and this is gene E. Parent 1 is homozygous dominant, parent 2 is heterozygous. So, as you see, probability for the progeny to be heterozygous is 50%. Once again, we can use uh, the same example. So, one half. And now let's move to the gene uh, F. And I would use green color. So first parent is homozygous recessive, second parent is heterozygous. So we have one parent who is uh, heterozygous and another is uh, homozygous recessive. And we are looking for progeny who is going to be heterozygous. And once again, as you see, probability is one half. So let's move to the uh, other gene. Let me choose another color. So let be white once again. So gene G uh, of the parent one is homozygous dominant and heterozygous. So dominant and heterozygous, so this example, and in the progeny we are looking for heterozygous. And uh, heterozygous in uh, this example is also 50%. So one 
half and the last jean uh, let me choose another color so jean h heterozygous one parent heterozygous another parent so this is going to be this example and uh, homozygous recessive for the progeny and this is going to be uh, this example so when we cross two heterozygous parents probability that they would have homozygous recessive in progeny would be one out of four so for this gene we put one quarter and of course because this is all independent probabilities we have to use a product rule we have to multiply all these probabilities all these independent probabilities we assume that all these genes are on the different chromosomes and would be assorted independently of each other so the answer would be 2 multiplied by 2 4 4 multiplied by 2 8 8 multiplied by 2 16 16 multiplied by 2 32 32 multiplied by 2 64 64 multiplied by 2 128 multiplied by 4 would 1 over 512 and this is going to be our answer today so this number represent probability that if we cross this genotype with uh, another genotype one parent with another parent of these two genotypes that probability that the progeny would have this genotype would be one out of 512 or if you need an answer in percentage form you have to divide 1 by 512 and then multiply it by 100 and this is going to be an answer in percentage form and I also want to note that uh, we were lucky today that uh, almost all the numbers are the same but uh, for example take a look here for example parent 1 is heterozygous parent 2 is heterozygous and if we would have two capital A here instead of one half we should put one quarter so just by accident uh, we have almost all the numbers that is one half but uh, if we would have different genotype here uh, we may have also here different numbers like one half multiplied by one quarter by one half by one quarter by one quarter and so on so for different uh, genotypes given for uh, progeny we may get uh, different probabilities here i hope uh, my explanation was clear for you and uh, it is also highly probable that if you study probability and genetics that you may have similar problem on your exam so hopefully now you would be able easily to solve such problems uh, within minutes and this is all for today thank you for your attention please subscribe for my new videos that i post almost every day thumbs up if you like this video please write your comments questions if you have any and see you in the next video goodbye